the principle of conservation of linear momentum states that the total linear momentum in an isolated system remains constant. So firstly, it's very important here to specify that it is linear momentum. We know that there is such a thing as angular momentum and that is not always conserved, which is why in our definition here we must specify that it is the total linear momentum. Secondly, we must specify that it is an isolated system, and an isolated system is a system where the net external force is zero. Note that that is not saying that there are no external forces. What it says is the net external force is zero. So the way we would see that for an object at rest on a surface, we know that there is a force of gravity that is pulling that object downward. That is an external force. It is a force outside of the system. But there is also a normal force that is essentially pushing this object upward. And as a result, the net force, as a result of those two external forces, is zero. So the only forces that we need to consider are the horizontal forces in the system, which is why it's important for us to specify that it's an isolated system in which linear momentum is conserved. So a common example of where this principle would be used is drawn here where we can say that two objects with separate masses are initially traveling towards each other they then collide with each other and move off in opposite directions and we are given the velocity of object a and we do not know the velocity of object b now since this is an isolated system we can say that the momentum is conserved which means that the total initial momentum in the system must be equal to the total final momentum in the system which means that that means that the initial momentum of a combined with the initial momentum of b must be equal to the final momentum of a plus the final momentum of b what this tells us is that the initial momentum of a can be found with a mass of A multiplied by the initial velocity, which we were told is 5. As you can see, it's important to define a direction as positive because there are two directions possible here. So I've picked right as positive. Obviously, that doesn't matter. You can choose left as well. Multiplied by the momentum of B. Initially, B has a velocity of 4 meters per second in the negative direction. Final mass of A remains unchanged. Final velocity of A is now in the opposite direction mass of b remains unchanged and the final velocity of b is the unknown that we are trying to solve for and we can solve this to find that the final velocity of b is 17 meters per second which obviously means that is 17 meters per second to the right that is this velocity here so this principle applies in any isolated system here we've got an example of two objects that collide with each other and then separate and become two objects again. It is also possible for there to be what's called an explosion. An explosion is when initially there are two objects that are combined and then some force causes them to separate and move off in opposite directions. And what we would do here is we would say once again momentum must be conserved and what that means is that initially, since they are combined, the mass of both objects must be combined because they must have the same velocity. And finally, they are then separate. And since they are separate, we can now say that is the mass of A multiplied by the final velocity of A plus the mass of B multiplied by the final velocity of B. Obviously, the reverse of this is also true if you have a system in which two objects start out and then collide and become a single object. This formula is the same, just the other way around. So the principle of conservation of momentum applies in any isolated system and it just says that the total amount of momentum of all objects combined before a collision is equal to the total amount of momentum of all objects combined after a collision. This could apply for two, three or four or however many objects are in the system.